pre-recorded Sunday and broadcast live from the warp gates of Araxis. It's the only station to elude Terran censorship, Vanu doxing, and NC corporate espionage. This is Radio Free Araxis. I'm Captain in Arms for the top stories from around Araxis for the week of April 9th through April 16th. Sports, traffic, and weather are coming up, but first, game development news. Our top story this week, changes made their way to the Public Test Server, or PTS, Saturday, April 15th. Changes include the addition of a new Cordium Tap module, a secondary location where ants can deposit mined Cordium away from the main silo. Initial Cordium costs for all construction items have been reduced significantly, but the maintenance costs in Cordium Drain have increased to offset the balance. Additionally, orbital strikes can no longer target area directly under an active skywall shield, can target within no construction zones, and have had their minimum range reduced from 200 to 150 meters. You can view these changes and more yourself by downloading the PTS from the Daybreak Games website and provide feedback on the r slash planetside subreddit. Quality of life ideas took a hold of the r slash planetside subreddit throughout this past week. Reddit user Fredic posted two ideas, the first suggesting outfits should be automatically disbanded if no players have logged in for one year. The idea was met with general acceptance, although Planetside Battles referee Maudi expressed concern this may disorganize the special characters on the competitive Jaeger server. Fredek's second suggestion included adding UI markers on the map to help denote which bases have the capacity to spawn galaxies and main battle tanks. Meanwhile, Miller TR player, PS2 community content creator, and loading screen artist Doku, aka Ranolf Busby, posted an idea to add specific class markers over players' heads. This would replace the basic triangle, or Dorito, that lies right underneath the player name, and would act much like the way vehicle identification markers do now. Finally, VS player Nazgrin suggested a half-off discount on all vehicles pulled from the warp gate to discourage warp gate camping. Daybreak Games developer Rel chimed in, quote, We were talking about this a bit yesterday. Wouldn't want to pull the trigger on something like this until we measure the overall impact of the discount changes. But it's on our minds." Unquote. According to Daybreak Games developer and YouTube personality Rel, a quality of life change, or QOL, quote, isn't necessary to facilitate gameplay balance or correct significant issues affecting the game, like bugs. Quality of life is basically the, it'd be nice to have, of features. Unquote. We'll be right back with your outfit and community news. Where we come from, we each fight for loyalty, for freedom, or perhaps enlightenment, but not here. Here we cast aside our disparate beliefs, our barriers and preconceived notions, and band together as a global force to engage in some of the largest competitive battles this world has ever seen. We are the squads, the platoons, the empires and servers, full of players coordinating a complex game of strategy and tactics. This is where combined arms happens. This is where war comes to play. This is Server Smash. Emerald vs. Cobalt on Esimir. Saturday, April 22nd at 1500 EST, only on twitch.tv slash planetside battles. This is your outfit and community news, keeping your ear to the ground in matters of Araxian politics, events, and drama. PS2 theorist and YouTube personality Patty Fathead Gaming released a podcast on his YouTube channel detailing the history of Daybreak Games and the development of PS2. What went right, what went wrong, and the thought processes behind them all, including an empathetic defense of the current Daybreak Games development team, including former developer John Smedley. I recognize him for what he was, a rare gem in the industry. Most CEOs of gaming companies are in the industry to find profits. 
and they will hunt down games that can generate those profits. John Smedley was the opposite of that. I am certain there is nothing he would have loved more than to just be a creative director. But it takes more than just a good idea. It takes finding investors and it takes building a company. He finished with an impassioned argument on why and how voting with your wallet matters, especially for the continued growth of PS2. This patch is a pivotal point for the game. It is asking the question, can players absorb monetization that this game desperately needs in order to ever grow again? There is no Smedley that's going to maintain a large development team just because the game's a passion project to him. The team is certainly greater than Rel, but he is the most public-facing member of it, and he is faced with trying to save a game that was handed to him in disastrous condition. Rel and the rest of the team will continue to put in front of us solutions to monetize the game. It will be up to the community if we can absorb them and hand back to the developers the ammunition they need to say, hey, let's spend more money on this five-year-old game and do something great with it. To view the video, just search Patty Fathead on YouTube. Cobalt player Arklore took to Reddit Friday, April 7th, asking if the well-known suicide stop killing yourself icon could be added as a decal in the game. Five days later on Tuesday, April 11th, PS2 artistic director Bill Yeats aka Bill Baca on Reddit, delivered just that. Later, former PS2 developer Malorn explained how Bill Yeats is the face model for the Caucasian player character, with his wife as the female. Voodoo company outfit lead Titanfall 14641 released a statement on the VCO website with an update on his recent policy changes addressing the outfit's apathy crisis. He explains how, with the changes in place, quote, our squads have never been more fit and capable, unquote. Critics worry that while quality of play has gone up, player count has gone down, with recent reports as low as 400, a number unseen since the VCO schism of 2014, when 300 members left in a 24-hour period following an internal dispute. Titanfall has acknowledged and anticipated these critiques, and has hinted at expanding again once there are, quote, more people trying out and learning to lead, unquote. Titanfall has never actually played the game Titanfall. Finally, the Miller server hosted a community air event Sunday, April 16th. The hour-long three-way sky battle took place on the live server, and Amorish's night sky was lit up in a mosaic of bright tracers and fireballs. Hopefully, this signals the beginning of more casual inter-outfit and cross-server events. Special thanks to Caroplay of Miller TR Outfit Millennium Marines, or MM, for info. If you've got scoops and announcements from your outfit, send a private message on Reddit under 200 words to Radio Free Araxis, all one word, and enclose your in-game name, outfit, outfit tags, faction, and server. Make sure to keep up with Radio Free Araxis by following at Rad Free Araxis on Twitter. That's at Rad Free Araxis on Twitter. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Every day, Hundreds of innocent sky whales are pulled from warp gates across Araxis by new players who have no idea what they're doing. These majestic miracles of flight are then flipped, abandoned, and shot out of the sky. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin Stalker. With your donation of just 10 certs, you'll be helping these gentle giants earn the bulldogs, walkers, and fire suppression they need to protect themselves. Call now at 555-5555 five 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 to save the sky whales this is rfa with your araxian sports update brought to you by planet side battles planet side battles 
pouring hours of free labor into something half of you are going to get salty about. Server Smash 73 takes place Saturday, April 22nd, 1500 Emerald Standard Time. The 90-minute 216 vs. 216 on Esamir will feature Cobalt as the TR and Emerald as the NC. Special guest color commentator includes yours truly, Captain in Arms for Radio Free Araxis. Hope to see you there. The match continues a long tradition of battlefield spectacle, stretching back to February of 2014 and showcasing Planetside at its highest tier and widest scope. Special rules for this match include a ban on all air-to-air lock-ons and max anti-infantry weapons. That's Saturday, April 22nd, 1500 Emerald Standard Time, live on twitch.tv slash planetsidebattles. The Scrim Masters Tournament took place this Easter weekend. The 12v12 style tournament began with a 10-team bracket on bases all across Araxes. The series was going strong right up until the final match when a staff error miscommunicated that the game was cancelled due to the Easter holiday, when in fact it wasn't. This led one side to not show up and disperse to their families. In the end, the officials were forced to call an unresolved draw between Miller's 1RPC versus Cobalt's X-Tac and Med-K, as the following weekend was to be overtaken by the Emerald vs. Cobalt server smash. Regardless, many expressed enthusiasm at the high quality of matches presented. The third season of Lane Smash is currently in pre-season and set to begin Saturday, April 22nd, 0800 Emerald Standard Time and continues through the weekend. The six matches boasting 24 outfits features the combined arms elements seen in Server Smash but confined to a section of a given continent. H1Z1, another Daybreak Games property, is set to air a tournament for its popular King of the Hill variant Thursday, April 20th at 2100 Emerald Standard Time on the CW channel. How the game beat the grandiose spectacle of Server Smash to television, we'll never know. Visit youtube.com slash planetsidebattles and twitch.tv slash planetsidebattles for live casts and past match archives and find out how to participate in scrims and smashes on the r slash planetside battle subreddit. Special thanks to Maudi and the PSB team for info. And now for your up to the minute Warpgate traffic report, brought to you by the Warpgate Transit Authority, WTA, getting you there instantaneously, so stop complaining. 14 seconds inbound to Indar Warpgate due to delays because it's Indar. 8 seconds inbound to Amherst Warpgate, 5 seconds inbound to Esamir Warpgate, and you're green to go into the swamps, 1 second inbound to Hassan Warpgate. Be on the lookout for sudden Warpgate closures due to accidents, construction, and military conquest. And now for our eagle eye in the sky, News Valk 7. Cap this lopsided base fight saw over 48 attackers defending a force of no more than 8 or so, eh? But the eight that are here are being quite sneaky about it, I'll give them that. I can see them placing proxy mines and claymores all over the base. Oh boy, I hope the attackers see them, because cause, cause they've just captured the base and, and they are rushing to the vehicle terminal. I wouldn't bunch up if I were them. Oh, holy smokes. Oh boy, oh, okay, that's, that, yeah, that's got to be a finished directive right there. Um, Folks, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you clear the area of infiltrators and mines when you cap up base before you get too complacent. Too many clever players out there. That's your News Valk 7 tip for the day. All right, back to you in the studio, Cap. And now for your continental weather update from Arax's official weather station, RFA. All numbers are in degrees nanites. It's shaping up to be another beautiful day on Araxis. Currently 101 and clear skies on Indar with a high of 105 and tonight a low of 64. 91 and humid on Hassan with a high of 97 and a low of 68. 72 and blue skies on Amherst with a high of 75 and a low of 70. And negative 28 and a blizzard warning effective on Esamir, high of negative 26 and a low of negative 34. Make sure to keep up with Radio Free Araxis by following at Rad Free Araxis on Twitter. That's at Rad Free Araxis on Twitter. 
This is Captain in Arms for Radio Free Araxis, wishing you a good night and a good fight. RFA is a subsidiary of the Voodoo Shipping Company, delivering fun and freedom to a video game near you since 2013. For more info, visit voodooshipping.net.